Hello! Welcome to today's video blog. Um, today's video blog is going to be a little book haul. Um, there's a few of the books that I've picked up in the last hmm, month or two? Month or so. Um, so, yeah. And I will just like to show them off to you guys. And if you guys read them, let me know. No spoilers and that kind of stuff. So, first book. Uh, dipping back into the world of crazy. We have V.C. Andrews' Echoes in the Walls. And I'll read the, the blurbs for you, because that's always fun. A House of Secrets novel. Echoes in the Walls. Home, excuse me. Home to the Davenports, a wealthy and distinguished family, the Grand Gothic Windermere House. Oh, this is set in Port Charles, General Hospital fans. Uh, is a labyrinth containing as many secrets as it does corners obscured in shadow. Fern Corey and her mother have lived there as servants for Fern's young life, entire young life. Despite their difference in station, Fern and Dr. Davenport's son, Ryder, oh, something's gonna happen there, have always been extremely close. I bet it they have. Which is never a problem until they come of age. Because happy pants. An intimate encounter following a high school prom brings the pair near tragic consequences and forces and the forces of fate, arrogance, and class prejudice gather to crush their warm relationship. Still the, real, still, the real threat to their happiness is something no one can control. The past, the, and the unspoken truths that lurk there. Oh, Fern and Ryder are brother and sister. I'm calling it now. Fern's and Ryder's parents suffer with empathy. They themselves, caught in the emotional maze the house creates. When the slow revelations of Windermere's secrets finally unfold, everyone party to them will become entangled in a treachery more complete. Excuse me more complete than any could have imagined, for the past is never really the past, no matter what age you are. Oh. So that looks like a nice dip into crazy that only V.C. Andrews can provide. Um, the next one is a historical romance, although I don't know any historical gowns that look like that. <laughs> Close, but a little... Uh. Aching for Always by Gwen Creedy. Uh, do you have an insert cover? Nope. Okay. Excuse me. Am I the only one who yawns when she talks a lot? Like, what is that? Am I the only one who, who that happens to? Whenever, like, I talk a lot, I end up, like, my mouth gets tired and makes me yawn. Ambitious and feisty, Josephine Joss O'Malley has spent years fighting to keep her mother's map-making company alive. Good luck with that once Google Map Quest gets a, head, a hold of you in the future. Uh, just when she finds herself considering taking risky next step with bad boy entrepreneur Rogan Reynolds, I almost wanted to say Ryan Reynolds, and I think that means that that's who this is um, modeled after. Rogan Reynolds whose generosity has helped keep the business afloat, Joss meets dark and mysterious Hugh Hawksmore. Hugh Jackman, anybody? Hugh's deft touch and old world seduction stir Joss's desires like a storm at sea, and she has no clue that he has sailed 300 years into the future Excuse me. to avenge the death of his brother at the hands of her father, or what she holds the key or that she holds the key to a map that will help him undo the destructive changes her father wrought in the past. When Hugh lures Joss into a treacherous journey through times, time, there's not a 21st century trick that can save her, but when she applies her own instincts to a course she thought was set, she discovers that the high seas hold some scandalous surprises. So, wait, the guy Hugh travels into the future, so that means Joss is in the future, like, in the 21st century? And she's trying to keep a map-making company alive? In the, in the year of, yeah, modern-day map-maker. In the year of Google Maps, really? You think you have a chance in hell? That's cute. <laughs> so, aching for always. Um, next one is Abby, oh, excuse me, Libby, Libby Sides? Libby, si I'm, like the font is a little weird. 
So I'm not sure if that's an S. I think that's an S. Let me see if it. Yeah, Libby Sides. S Y D E S. Um, Annalise. Excuse me. Annalise gazed out the castle window as a tall, shackled stranger was pulled from the carriage below. In his face was a terrifying beauty, chiseled features that bespoke an aristocratic lineage, fathomless eyes that promised revenge. This was Bryson Lefort, the last Duke of Marchfield. This was the man she'd been summoned to marry. They said he'd spent years in a monastery. They lied. One glimpse of his pale face, and she'd seen into his darkest heart, felt his ice-blue eyes, and melt her innocent soul. His only weapon was silence, but rage gave him strength. Now he was a prisoner again, this time in his scheming mother's gilded cage. This girl was his price for freedom. She's a, she, a commoner, would bear his heirs and save the Marchfield estate from the Mad King George. They were both trapped, but even as Annalise plotted her escape, Bryson knew he could never let her go, because she gave him happy pants. She knew his secrets ignited his passions. Happy pants? was his fate. Uh, no power in heaven or hell could stand between them now. Though they will try. The next one is Patricia Grasso's Violets in the Snow. And is there an insert? No. No insert cover. He was her guardian, the Duke of Ar Darkness and Desire. She tried to drive him away From Arden Hall. Instead, Isabel Montgomery was charmed by the rake held John St. Germain, the handsomest and most dangerous man she'd ever met. He said she was his ward, and he'd come to sweep her off to London in a proper debut. Isabel's guardian angel had promised a dark prince would be sent by destiny to save her, but St. Germain's scorching appraisal suggested she needed protection from him. No woman could refuse the dashing, dashing John St. Germain, Duke of Avon, arrogant and darkest sin. St. Germain had known betrayal and would, and vowed no woman would claim his heart again, but he hadn't reckoned on the innocent beauty who slammed the door in his face. Much against his will, he had agreed to become her guardian, to prepare her for London's marriage market, but now he was determined to claim her as his own, oblivious of the enemies he'd earned pursuing the woman who had become his heart, his soul, his destiny. And the next one is one of those old-school harlequins that um, I love to collect. And this one is from 1981. Dorothy Gork's Secret Marriage. Look at that cover, that old school cover. And it's a silhouette romance, which uh, is not with us anymore. It is now, um, it was taken over by Harlequin. Forbidden love. Excuse me. Good gracious. Every time. Forbidden love. Penniless, a burden to her relatives. Grace Lawson had rashly married a virtual stranger to escape an intolerable home situation. She looked forward to making a new life in the Australian outback. Soon she learned that she had meant she'd been tricked. Warwick had married her only to ensure his inheritance and was quite obviously attracted to another woman. Trapped in a loveless marriage, Grace now found herself irresistibly man drawn to a man who was not her husband. Oh, I thought it was going to turn. I thought it was going to take a turn like that she was going to. Like that she, he was um, initially attracted to another woman, but he was going to fall in love with her and that she was going to, you know worm her way into his heart and that his her husband was eventually going to love her but no that's not where this went okay and the last one penny jordan oh r.i.p penny jordan you of the wonderful melodramatic crazy sauce in a short span of time uh harlequin presents penny jordan's response and look at that cover that old school awesome cover and this one was written in oh 1984 his honor left him no choice of course sienna had been swept off her feet by the handsome powerful greek 
Alexis Stephan Stephanides. I shall imprint myself on your heart and body so that you will never forget me. My mind totally went to Twilight with uh, Jacob and, and, and What's-Her-Face's daughter. Rin asked me, you imprinted on my daughter? Um, <laughs> he said once he'd won her heart. She'd been chosen, not for love, but in vengeance for the wrong he believed her brother had done to his sister. People are taking vengeance on, like, family relatives. Um, too late, the truth would come out. Too late to save Sienna's whole world from exploding in pain. Still deep in shock, Sienna found herself married to Alexis, with her mind instinctively fearful of her body's intimate cravings. Oh, the crazy sauce. So, that is my little book haul. Hope you enjoyed that. Um... Again, you know, like, subscribe, all that wonderful, awesome jazzness um, for uh, videos. I try at least once a week to have a video up here for you. Um, once, sometimes twice, twice a week. Uh, I do bookish videos, fan videos, um, just videos shooting the bleep. So hit that little subscribe -y button. And uh, follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash author e. Jamie. I screwed that up. I was doing so well for so long. It's, it, I've been talking too much today, that's why. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author e. Jamie. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author e. Jamie. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.